for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the top five products that I stocked up on while I was in Japan. Now, let me tell you guys, when I was planning my trip to Japan, boy, did I have an extensive shopping list. But I did kind of have like a solid idea of what I wanted to pick up multiples of. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video, sharing with you guys my thoughts. Let's get started, shall we? So the first thing that I stocked up on while I was in Japan were eyelashes. So I have been super into Japanese false eyelashes and these just tend to fit my eye shape the best. They're also super affordable and a lot of times when I'm looking for lashes to wear, I like the lashes that have the invisible band. It's just easier for me to blend them into my eyelashes. So actually, I'm wearing my favorite brand of lashes, which is, I believe it's pronounced Mish Blooming. You guys will correct me, I'm sure, if I'm incorrect. And I'm wearing them right now. The style that I'm wearing is actually number five, Girly Wink. And I have gone through literally packs of Mish Blooming eyelashes, so I actually found these in some type of drugstore. I'm actually not even sure what the store was called. They just had like a big tax-free sign, so I walked into it. And they had like, it was like a pharmacy slash beauty store slash they had food there as well. So I don't actually know technically what those would be called in Japan. So I got two styles. I got RPN08, which looks like that. <laughs> these ones have uh, like a bit of a flare at the end and these are also brown. And then I got these, and these are more of like to create a round eye effect or like a rounder eye to make your eye look rounder. Ugh, I can't get my words out today. But the length is actually in the middle of the band, so these are in black. So I got these two because I was like eight bucks for five pairs of lashes. You really can't get much cheaper than that. So lashes I stocked up on. I actually have been wearing eyelashes a lot more recently. These go on like perfectly. They're easy to use and they look fairly natural, I feel like. But Speaking of eyes, these are kind of random, but I stocked up on eye drops. <laughs> I actually have heard of Roto eye drops in the past. This girl I've been watching lately, she recommended these Roto Lise eye drops. Her name's Tina. And I want to try them because I've really red eyes. So I'm going to try these. They have all kinds. Hopefully this is what I need. They do have lots of different versions, but I'm, I think I remember it being pink. The box is really pretty. <laughs> but I was watching Tina's channel, which I'll link her channel down below, and she recommended the pink one. She said that these are really good for when your eyes get red. I see there's some type of like UV thing here and then like a sparkly eye. I know these are good for making the whites of your eyes look whiter. I don't know what the UV thing is. Maybe you guys can tell me what that means. But I bought these because I get, you know, irritated eyes quite often with my line of work since I'm staring at a computer screen for long periods of time. So I thought something like this would be nice. So I actually bought two boxes because they were super affordable there, obviously. And then I decided to try this one out as well. There was like a whole shelf of Roto brand eye drops. And I grabbed this one because it had like lots of vitamins on it and I was like, oh, these might be great for hydration and moisture because, you know, I, I equate blue to moisture. <laughs> Logic! Looking at the back, it's rated as a 5, which I'm pretty sure that means it's the most cooling, which if you're not familiar with Roto eye drops, they're notorious for being like super cooling and almost like tingly feeling. I don't even know how to describe it, but they're just known to like give your eyes that like icy feeling. So I think I accidentally picked out the most severe of the iciness. But we'll find out. Online, if I were to purchase them, they were much more expensive. They were like three to four times the price. So, ah, these are something I am super excited about. I'm a big bath girl. I like baths. <laughs> Japan is known for a thing called, at least I call it milky baths. I don't know if that's what they're referred to. I don't know anything like this in the States, any brand that I could equate to something like this. But basically what I stocked up on are bath salts. So I got a couple different boxes. I just wanted to try a couple different brands. I actually saw these two brands online. I just recognize the boxes in store from what I Google search, so I actually can't tell you the name of these. I'm sure you guys will help me out. So essentially what these are, are little packets of 
bath salts. So each one has like 12 to 15. And basically what these are, are salts from Japan. So they're good for making your skin soft. Basically any benefits you would take from like an Epsom salt bath, you get in this. And they're scented. They also make the bath milky, which is why I call them milky baths. So they're actually pretty potent. One packet actually makes my whole bathroom smell super amazing. Kind of like lush, but more affordable and <laughs> Japanese. I honestly wish I could have bought more of these, but you know, since they are powdered products or like salts, they are fairly heavy. So I only got a couple of boxes and honestly, these will last me a long time. I know you can purchase these online, but they're obviously more expensive than if you were to buy them in Japan and bring them back. This one has like four different flavors as well. And the nice thing about these bath products is because they do have the package form. I can give them out to friends or family and share, which I thought was really convenient and nice, so I can share a little bit of like Japanese bath. <laughs> this one I just grabbed off the shelf because I thought it looked luxurious with the rose. I have actually opened this and tried it out. It is blue when it goes into the bath and it does smell like roses, so I should probably have taken that away because the rose in it blew, but. Oh, the brand is Bath Clean, and I'm pretty sure this is also a pretty popular Japanese bath salt brand. The next thing I stocked up on, I actually showed you guys in my Daiso Japan haul, and that is some konjac sponges. How these work, they're like hard, and then you get them wet and they get soft, and I use them with my cleanser when I wash my face, maybe once or twice a week, and basically what the sponge does is it gives your skin a very soft and gentle exfoliation. You can use these multiple times, so they have like a little string on them, you just hang them up in your shower, use them for however long, and then you throw them away and get a new one. The reason that I stocked up on these while I was in Japan is because these are so much cheaper, obviously, in Japan. I know Western companies have these and make them and sell them, but they're just, I don't know, I look at them and I'm like, ugh, so expensive, and I know they're so much cheaper in Japan. Oh, here's konjac sponges. Get two of these. Okay. We have all kinds of them. So since I got these from Daiso, they were 150 yen a piece, so about a dollar, so so much cheaper, so I got a couple of them. So if you see konjac sponges, definitely grab yourself some, and especially at Daiso, because what a steal Daiso is. Daiso is so much fun. I've got more Daiso videos coming up, by the way. Last but certainly not least, I stocked up on sunscreen while I was in Japan. Now, of course I love my Korean sunscreens, but I also really like Japanese sunscreens. They're just formulated really nicely. The protection level is a lot higher. They do a really good job of having UVA and UVB protection. And yeah, this is actually one of my favorite all-time sunscreens. This is the Biore Watery UV Watery Essence. So I got it in two different formats. This is a watery gel, while well, this is a watery essence. So I thought I'd try it out. So I actually picked these up from Don Quixote. And again, I stocked up on these when I was in Japan because they are a lot cheaper because obviously I'm not importing them to me. Here's the stuff that I get. Oh my gosh, it's six. Oh wait, no, this isn't Sun Kill. It's like a dupe. <laughs> where, oh where? Hmm. There's all kinds of sunscreens though. Found them. It's a huge section. It's still so cheap. Oh my gosh. Oh. They have all different kinds too. Oh my gosh, I'm going in. They've got like multi packs. I'm so excited. I have my Biore UV Watery Essence and Gel again. These are so good. They're like my favorite. I think these were actually in my 2018 yearly favorites and Still to this day, I use up tubes of this. Now, of course, besides these, there are a lot of other really great Japanese sunscreen brands, but these are like my oldies but goodies. Bonus! <laughs> okay, so I know I said the sunscreens were the last thing that I stocked up on, but another little bonus I wanted to throw in here about stuff that I stocked up on while I was in Japan was Japanese food! Oh my gosh, so much cheaper by the way, to buy some of my favorite Japanese staples, I guess. I usually purchase them at like an Asian grocery store. And even the Asian grocery store to me is not close, so it's not the most convenient trek for me. So I bought a couple things, which again, I was blown away by how much cheaper it was in Japan. Like obviously I knew it was gonna be cheaper, but boy, are we paying steep prices here in the States. Exhibit A, 
This wasabi was like less than a dollar. I know this seems really silly to buy, but like wasabi for 78 yen, these are like three or four bucks at home. For wasabi, I pay like $5 a tube. So I just grabbed myself one of these because you know it's easy to bring back. It's a small tiny tube. And now I've got wasabi for a long time. Miso soup. I drink miso soup all the time. What do you think the difference is between the green and the red? Uh, Maybe like low sodium? They have more reds, so I feel like this is like the... 358 yen for 24. I pay like six bucks for four packs, for like four soups. Now I have 24 soups. <laughs> Even like miso base is so cheap. This is a huge bag, you can see that. For 158 yen, wow. I think I pay like five, six bucks for a pack of four, which is insane, I realize that. But this was so much cheaper. How? How do I pay this much for miso soup? I'm ruined, you guys. And then I got this, which I actually don't know if this was much cheaper in Japan. I wanted to get some matcha, so I got a matcha latte version because matcha latte is quite delicious. And this is just a powdered matcha drink so I can have like a nice refreshing matcha latte whenever my heart desires. And I think this was like four or five bucks. I couldn't go to Japan and not get green tea. I know I kind of cheated by getting the latte version, but or matcha. Anyways guys, so those are the products that I stocked up on while I was in Japan. I mainly picked them up because they were more affordable or I could get multiples of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys have any things you stock up on while you're in Japan or maybe in any other country, let me know in the comment section down below. I think it'd be really fun to hear what products you guys stock up on on particular trips you go or places you like to go or what is actually good enough to buy multiples of. So, I don't call it hoarding, do you? As always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy. And don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!